bakers this week you challenged me to taste the rainbow so this week dish has to focus on color which is a pretty exciting thing especially in the spring so I wanted to take it really literally um, so my goal was to make a rainbow cake which is very trendy right now but I wanted to put an extra little spin on it so for this cake I am using completely all-natural food dyes that I make myself out of fruits and veggies. So it's actually gonna be a two part series. The first part, I'm gonna show you how to make the dyes that I make for this process, which is brand new to me, which is really fun. And then the second part, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna use those dyes to dye the cake and the buttercream and some drip ganache. So let's go ahead and get started on those dyes. For the yellow food coloring, we're going to simmer uh, half a cup of water with one teaspoon of turmeric powder. And you can see that turmeric powder is very, very yellow, which is also very pretty golden yellow. And turmeric comes from a root. And inside that root, there's a chemical called curcumin, which gives it its yellow pigment. Turmeric has some really great health benefits. It's used for inflammation, fever, depression, and high cholesterol. This yellow has simmered for about three minutes and it's gotten more condensed. So you can see the line that it was at. It's gotten a lot more condensed. Um, and it's got a little bit of that raw flavor out of the turmeric. You shouldn't taste the turmeric. It's got such a bright color. Um, before you add it, make sure to cool it down completely. Also, whatever container you're gonna store it in, be careful because turmeric stains really, really easily. So make sure you're putting it in a container that you don't mind having a little stain. For the green, we've got a quarter cup of water in the blender and we're gonna add um, a cup of thawed frozen spinach. Spinach gets its green color from chlorophyll just like most plants get their green color from. It's high in lots of vitamins and minerals, um, which help it be a great immune system booster. Uh, it's got high in antioxidants. It promotes healthy bones because it's got lots of calcium uh, and it helps regulate blood pressure. So we're just gonna puree this until it's completely smooth. If your blender is not quite catching, you can add a little bit more water to help. Just try not to add too much water. So you want to make sure it's a nice and fine puree. <clears throat> then you're going to pour it into a strainer and you're going to strain, up, trying to get all that liquid out. So you're going to have to push pretty hard on your strainer. So you want to get all of that awesome green color out. So I'm going to do that with this entire batch of green color. So we're going to make purple now. And in my pot, I have a quarter cup of water. And to make purple, I'm ironically going to use blueberries because blueberries aren't really actually blue, they're really more purple. And these are frozen blueberries. You can use fresh blueberries, but blueberries aren't really in season right now. Um, so it's usually a little bit more economical to use frozen. And we're gonna cook these until they start to burst. Um, and when they're all burst, we're gonna mash them up and then we will strain them. So this has been on for a while and you as you can see most of the blueberries have popped which is exactly what we want it's gonna help release all that color and you can see just how beautiful purple that already is now we're gonna strain it out so we don't have any of those solids in our food coloring mm, i love the smell of cooked blueberries so just like before we're gonna strain it out 
get all that lovely colorful liquid out. So that liquid has been strained out and we're gonna put it actually back on the heat and we're gonna reduce it by about half till we have about a quarter of a cup and that's just gonna give us a much more intense uh, color without having to add too much liquid to our recipe. So as you can see, this has reduced a lot and it's gotten really, really thick, which is awesome because we don't want to want to avoid adding too much liquid to our, our buttercreams or our cakes whenever we're coloring them. So this is exactly what we want. So all we need to do is let this cool before we add it to whatever we need to color. So for our orange, I have a carrot that's been kind of sliced pretty small in my blender and I'm just going to add a little bit of water and I might end up a little bit more but I only want enough just to help it puree and then I'm going to let it rip. So carrots are awesome because they can help improve eye health. They're also great for lowering cholesterol and they are a weight loss friendly food. Okay so we got our carrots all pureed and we're going to add out to our strainer and we're gonna get out that liquid. Uh, if you had a, a juicer at home, this would actually be way, way better because you wouldn't have to add any water to get that nice bright orange uh, carrot juice. This would be a more intense color. Not everybody has a juicer at home, so here is a different way that you could do it. And just like for the other ones you strain, you really want to push, get extract all that liquid and all that color as much as you can. This paste inside should be pretty dry by the time you're done. All right, so for our red, we're gonna use beets. Um, so I'm gonna cut off the tops and the tails of my beets. And then I'm gonna peel them because that peel kind of has a brownish tinge which will throw off my color, which I don't want. Beets have like this awesome natural sweetness so it's gonna be great for dessert. Originally, red velvet cakes were made with beets before uh, commercial red food coloring exists. So that's actually where red food um, Red velvet cake originated was from leftover beets or beet juice. All right. So now I'm gonna cut them just into kind of little dice shapes, not super important the size. I'm not really concerned because I'm just gonna cook these uh, kind of to death. So, but if I do them a little bit smaller, it'll go a little bit faster. And you can see how quickly it's staining my hand and how it's staining my cutting board. So that's how you know there's lots of color in here for sure. So I always use, like this is an older cutting board because I know it's gonna stain a little bit. Some people will put a little vegetable oil or pan spray, a thin coat, I feel like it's a little wasteful, but that helps make sure that your um, board doesn't get stained. And a lot of times in the industry, we will wear gloves. So this doesn't happen, but we're in a day where we don't need to be wasting gloves on things um, because we need gloves everywhere for everything. So those are my beets ready to get cooked. All right, so I'm gonna cook my beets and you can just see just from the beets sitting in the water, they've already let out a lot of color. It's gonna give us this really nice pink um, red's pretty hard to achieve, so it's definitely going to be more like a pink. Even for um, commercial food coloring manufacturers, red is a very challenging color to achieve. Um, so anyway, I've got this on high heat, and I'm just going to cook these until the beets are nice and tender. Uh, beets are really great for a lot of reasons. They have a lot of nutrients in them with a pretty low calorie, especially considering they have pretty sh high sugar content. They're really, really sweet tasting. 
Um, sugar can be made out of beets. Most of the sugar we get in the grocery store is made out of sugar cane, but people have made sugar out of beets historically, so that's pretty cool. Um, it can really help keep your blood pressure in check, and it's known to improve athletic performance. So we're gonna let these uh, boil until they feel nice and tender. So as these beets are cooking, you just wanna check on them periodically. Um, if the water evaporates and it gets a little low, we can add a little bit. We don't want to add too much though, because uh, we're going to use this liquid to puree the beets when they're nice and soft. So just add it as needed. Um, again, we're almost soft enough. It's still getting a little bit of resistance. Uh, beets are kind of hard on a food process or a food processor or a blender. So we're going to continue to boil these until they're super, super tender. All right, so our beets have boiled for a while and they're nice and soft. And there's not a ton of liquid in the pot. Uh, you do need some to help it puree, but you also don't want a ton. So I'm gonna get this in and you can already see this pretty kind of scarlet red that we're gonna get from these beets, ironically called purple beets. I feel like that's a pattern with these colors, right? <laughs> um, so we're gonna get this pureed and then we'll strain it. So we got these beets all nice and pureed, so we're gonna do the same thing as before. We're gonna put them through our strainer and press down really hard to get all that bright, colorful, red, pink color out. So for our blue, Food coloring, we're ironically gonna use a red cabbage. I wanna show you real quick how to prepare cabbage. So I usually take off the outside leaves um, just cause they're usually pretty tough. So you always wanna take off those outside leaves. And for this, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter about toughness cause we're not actually gonna use the cabbage. Um, and then I'm gonna cut it in half. If you look on the inside, this giant white part is really, really tough, and that's not the part that you want to eat. So we need to take that core out. So we put it flat side down. And then I'm going to cut it in half. And then I'll put my knife at an angle to cut out. That's a hard thing to do from this angle. Let me try this angle. Camera's in my way. <laughs> so I'm going to take it on an angle, and I'm going to cut that core off. That's gonna give me all the tender leaves. And then I need about two cups of shredded cabbage. So I'm gonna cut it a little bit smaller. And then I'm just gonna, doesn't have to be perfect size, not important at all for this. We're just gonna extract the color. So I'm just gonna get two cups of cabbage, the rest of the cabbage I'm gonna cook uh, for something else later in the week. In this pot, I have a cup and a half of water and I'm gonna add my two cups of shredded cabbage. Then I'm gonna bring that up to a simmer. Try to get it so that it's all, as much of it is, can, is touching the water as possible. Always it goes faster if you put it on it too. All right, so our water just came up actually to a boil. Um, so I'm actually gonna turn it off and I'm just gonna let this cabbage steep in this liquid and you can already see how much the color has changed. And yes, I see that it's not blue yet. Don't worry, be patient. We're gonna get it blue. Um, but this, you could do this method if you wanted to for purple so you can see how vibrant and purple it is. Um, so we're gonna let this steep for about 15 minutes and that's gonna help extract even more color. The cabbage has been steeping for about 15 minutes and you can see just how much awesome uh, color has come out. So I'm gonna take out all this cabbage now and then I'm gonna turn my heat back on and I'm gonna reduce it so I can get um, a more concentrated color per liquid amount. So we're gonna 
go until it's about a quarter of a cup, which is gonna be barely anything in this giant pot. You don't really want to cook it longer with the cabbage because the cabbage will definitely let off um, that cabbage flavor, which we do not want in our pastries. Uh, so we want to make sure we get all that out and then we're going to reduce it. So all of the cabbage is strained off. So I'm going to put it on high heat and let that water so slowly evaporate until I have about a quarter cup left. All right, so here is the reduced juice from the red cabbage. You can see it's this really, really pretty purple color. But we're not making purple. We are making blue. So red cabbage contains a water-soluble pigment called anocyanin that changes colors when it's mixed with an acid or a base. So what we're going to do is we're going to add just a little bit of baking soda. And I'm hoping that in this white bowl you'll really be able to see the magic. So I'm going to add that in and I'm going to stir it. And just like that, it goes from purple to blue. How, how incredibly interesting. And, and you can even see how it was purple here. But now it's completely turned blue. Blue is a pretty hard thing to come by naturally. So it's very, very unique that you can do it, especially with a product called Red Cabbage that gives you purple juice. And then later, blue food coloring. So I just finished making all my liquid colors. So now I'm going to make some powder colors. So I have a couple different things here. Uh, a lot of the whole, this whole sheet pan and this is all the stuff that was left over from the liquid color. So when I strained out the mixture, this is what was left. So I'm gonna use this to make orange color, green color, purple, and red color. And then um, if you only wanted powdered color. This is kind of a way you could do it. So I'm going to dehydrate these. Um, so this is beet slices and carrot slices. You could do the same, especially if you have fresh spinach. It's much easier. You could just put the leaves of fresh spinach down. Um, so this is going to go into a very, very low oven just so that it slowly pulls out all the moisture and really, really dries all of this out. And I'm going to check on them periodically until they're completely, completely dry. Uh, and then we're gonna turn them into a powder and powders are really nice, especially with uh, this kind of application. We don't ha have quite as condensed as you might be able to get in a commercial product. So using powdered makes it so that you can add color to your product without adding any additional liquid that might kind of throw off the consistency. So we're gonna get this into the oven and we're gonna check on it periodically until it's all completely dehydrated. So these purees and um, slices of vegetables have dehydrated overnight and you can see just how dry. So actually, I dehydrated them until they were nice and um, dry. And then I turned the oven off and left them in the oven overnight just to make sure they continued to dehydrate in that dry um, kind of atmosphere. So today I'm going to make them into a powder form. So if the process for these is all gonna be the same, so I'm gonna start with the spinach and you can see just how dry that puree has gotten. It's crazy dry. So I'm just gonna break it up and put it in my mortar and pestle. Then I'm gonna grind it up. You could also use a spice grinder for this. Um, that would work as well. I don't have a spice grinder. So I'm gonna do the old fashioned hand version. So I'll kind of beat them up to break them into small pieces at first. Then some might fly out, that's okay. And it might get a little loud, but that's okay. We can get our frustrations out. When the pieces start to get a little bit smaller, you can do a little bit more uh, kind of a grinding action. And you can already see there's some dust is starting to form in the bottom. So I'm just gonna keep going until this is all turned into powder. So I've been working on this spinach powder for a while and it's mostly powder. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna sift it out um, so I can get all that nice fine powder. So definitely don't want any of the big chunks. Um, 
depending on how much powder I need, I can either get rid of these big chunks or I can put them back in and continue to start grinding. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of my powder nice and sifted until it's all really nice and fine. So here are all my finished powders. So we got the blueberry, carrot, beets, and the spinach. Um, and the purees worked way better than the slices. So in the future, I would definitely suggest, even if you didn't make the liquid version, just pureeing whatever you're gonna use definitely worked. I didn't, this is um, actually only the puree of these two. When I tried to grind the slices, it did not go very well. Perhaps if you had um, a real dehydrator, it might work a little bit better than using your oven, but not very many people have their own dehydrators. Uh, and these are my finished powdered colors.